Hello everyone, welcome back to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Have you ever wondered what grids really are and why they are so important in design? Well, grids are like invisible guidelines that help you organize your designs neatly. They are made of rows and columns that ensure everything is aligned and looks balanced, whether it's a website or a mobile app. Think of them as a backbone of your layout. It's what makes your design look professional and easy to navigate. Now, why do we need to make grids responsive? Simple, people use all kinds of devices these days. Big screens, small screens, and everything in between. By creating responsive grids, you ensure your designs adapts beautifully to any screen size without breaking or looking cluttered. So in this video, I'll show you how to set up responsive grid in Figma step by step so you can create clean, flexible designs that look great everywhere. So let's get started. But before that, here is a quick info for you guys. You can unlock your potential with Simply Learn's advanced certification in UI UX design and dive into the world of user-centered design. This course covers essential skills like wireframing, prototyping, usability testing, and mastering industry-leading tools such as Sketch, Figma, and Adobe XD. A Gen AI-powered UI UX design course focused on practical learning. So whether you're an aspiring designer, a developer looking to expand your skill set, or someone transitioning into the UI UX field, this program offers hands-on experience, real-world projects, and expert guidance from industry experts. So enroll today to begin your journey toward a successful career in UI UX design with Simply Learn. You can find the course link in the description box and pinned comments. So first, let's create a frame. For that, let's hit the F button on the keyboard. So either you can, you know, select any of the frames from here, like for your desktop. Right now, I'm just creating a frame with a width of 1440 pixels because usually we work, while we are working for desktop designs, we give 1440 pixels for the width. And let's just rename my frame as desktop yeah so now let's add the grid now for adding the grid you can just go to your right bottom here you have the layout grid hit the plus symbol add grid symbol now by default you'll get the grid but right now like for this project we don't want grid we'll be working with rows and columns separately so we'll just go here we'll change the grid system to columns we'll first work with columns and we need 12 columns. So basically, while we are uh, working with desktop, uh, while we are designing for desktop, we actually use a grid of 12, 12 columns. Yeah. Here, as you can see, in the type, you have uh, four options. Left, right, center, and stretch. So make sure that you are in stretch. You uh, select the stretch mode because, you know, basically, we need responsiveness. So when I say responsiveness, it means that when I shrink the frame, when I expand the frame, or when I shrink the frame, I want to make sure so these columns contract and expand according to the movement of the frame. For example, I'll just show you if I would have selected center, right? So as you can see, there are 12 columns. Till now, there are 12 columns, right? But after that, when I narrow it down, the number of columns becomes less because it is not responsive. But on the other hand, while I keep it in the stretch mode, right now I have 12 columns. So even if I contract it, as you can see, there are still 12 columns, right? So that is called responsiveness. So to attain responsiveness, make sure that, yeah, sorry, so for responsiveness, make sure that your grid is in the stretch mode. Now we'll keep a margin of 64 units and gutter, of 24 units so uh, margin means it's a space you know outside the grid like the margin of a page and the gutter means it's the spaces in between the grids in between the columns or rows okay now as you might have observed uh, the values that i've kept are multiples of four or eight like for example margin for margin i've kept 64 which is a multiple of four and eight and for gutter i've kept 24 which is a multiple of four and eight and we'll be doing this throughout the video because mostly Four-point and eight-point grid systems are widely used while designing. So now what does the four-point and eight-point grid system mean? Let's see. Now the four-point and eight-point grid systems are ways to keep designs neat and consistent by using multiples of four or eight pixels for spacing, sizing and alignment. For example, if you're designing a button, its height could be 40 pixels, which is 8 into 5, and the padding around it could be 16 pixels, which is 8 into 2. 
Now, the 8-point grid is more common because it works well for both big and small screens, while the 4-point grid is used for more detailed designs. Now, here are some of the reasons why it is widely used. Number one, it keeps designs neat. The grid makes sure everything is aligned and spaced evenly so designs look clean and organized. Number two, works on all screens. The 8-point grid adjusts easily to different screen sizes, making designs look good everywhere. And number three is easy for developers. It's simple to code because the sizes and spacing match what developers use in their work. So now that you know what a 4-point and 8-point grid system is, now why are these values very important? Like for example, you know, many people have a confusion with what value should I use, you know, for the margin while designing. So as already seen, mostly we give multiples of 4 or 8, but then what, is there any exact value that we are supposed to keep for margin? So the size of the margin that you keep totally is determined by the container size. So now what is a container? Let's take an example. So this is an example of a website that I have taken for explanation from the Figma community. So basically container in Figma is a frame or shape used to group and organize design elements, providing structure and alignment in layouts. So basically it helps maintain consistency by holding related items, like it can be text, images or buttons within a defined space. So containers are crucial for responsive designs as they control how elements resize or reposition across different screen sizes. So for example, uh, if this is your frame, this is your frame, as you can see, this is one container. As you can see, this is one container and it has related elements. Ba basically container means it's actually groups, okay? So it's like the this is a container where it has grouped the related elements. Now this is another container. As you can see, these are individual entities, you know, this text, these texts, this image is an individual entity, but as it is for, uh, sorry, yeah. So, but then as it is a part of the hero section, it is under one container. So basically these are containers and the margin that you select depends, like as you can see, these are the margins. So the margin size will totally depend on the container size that you decide while designing. Now the container size also varies along with the different device resolutions, which is very obvious. Like if I give you an example, if I want a container size of say maybe 1120, okay, for a desktop of width 1440. So what I would do is, this is a desktop with a 1440. And right now, let me just draw a rectangle. Just consider that this is my container, okay. So right now, the container size is 1312. But then I want it as 1120. So for that, what I would do is, I would go to my desktop. And I would change my margin to something like 160. Now let me see what my container size would be. As you can see, the container size is 1120. So first I will decide what my container size should be and then I'll decide the margin. So for now, let it be 64 itself. Yes, let me just expand a bit. Now for designing, columns alone are not enough. We need horizontal rows too. So for that, again, head over to the layout grid, hit the plus icon. Again, you will get a grid, edit it, go to rows. Now in rows, we'll just change the type from stretch to top because, you know, I basically need the rows from the top, from the very top. So I'll keep it as top and we will give the number as 500 okay like we'll give a count of 500 or 1000 or anything like we'll give a huge number so basically why it is even while I expand like while designing even while I expand you know I don't want the rows to end suddenly so that's why I give a pretty big number let's go back and height I will set it as 8 because basically here I'm working with 8 point grid so I'll keep the height as 8 the offset will be 0, the gutter will be 8 again. Okay, now again, what is offset? So offset is basically the margin, like the, you can call it as the top and bottom margin. Like for example, if I kept the uh, offset as 50, it would actually give a margin on the top and bottom, but basically we don't need it now. So let's just keep it 0. Yes. So now let's just make a rough design just to show you the use of grids. So we already made video on how to make a responsive design. Uh, so please check it out. So here we'll draw a rectangle for the header. Let me just zoom in. Yeah, 
we'll make a rectangle for header so this is how it, you know you make use of the horizontal grid sorry horizontal yeah horizontal rows and vertical columns so this is the header i would uh, now i want the content so for the content or the for the hero section let me just consider yeah rectangles i'll just duplicate it yeah and i just need a footer too so i'll just duplicate this also now what i'll do is as this is the content section this is the content section so what i would do is i'll just hold the shift key and i would group them now as you see this is the group and this is the container size that i would like to work in this design and this was the container that we were talking about earlier in this video as you can see let me just zoom a bit when i move this so when i move the cursor it actually snaps to the next point right as you remember this is the eight point grid system so it snaps to the next point now let me just you know it's always not easy to drag so now let me just use the arrow button I'll just zoom again yeah so when i'm using the arrow button in the keyboard it's just moving by one pixel as you can see it's just moving by one pixel so working with arrow alone is not convenient like for example i would want to shift eight pixels at once right okay let me just shift just this yeah eight pixels at once so for that we use shift plus arrow in the keyboard so let's just try that shift plus arrow but here is the problem as you can see I was here and this is the 8th pixel, right? But then while I use shift plus arrow, it moves almost 10 pixels and I don't want that. And that is because we haven't set the nudge value, okay? Now there is a thing called nudge value where it will be set by default minimum as 0 and maximum as 10. So minimum means with one arrow, it will go one pixel and maximum with shift and arrow, it will go to the 10th pixel. Okay, now so we have to change, like let the minimum uh, nudge value be 1, not 0, sorry, 1. But I want the maximum nudge value to be just 8. For that, you have an option over here. As you can see, there's a Figma icon. You can go to actions and here, I've just used it or else you can search for nudge amount. So here you can find small nudges 1, but the big nudge, I want it to be just 8. Right? So now let me try. I kept the cursor here. I press shift plus the bottom arrow. As you can see, it moves exact 8 pixels. Now, while working with responsiveness, we usually work on three devices. So, let's create frames for tablet and mobile as well. So, let's just delete all this for time being. Yeah. So, again, let's create a frame. So, I want my tablet frame to be of 770 pixels wide. Rename the sets tablet now again either you can manually you know go and add the uh, columns and rows like how we did for the desktop or else what you can do is uh, you can just go to this frame let me just zoom out a bit go to this frame select both just a second yeah you will find a you know hand symbol hold shift key select both of them hit control c or command c go over to your tablet and just paste it so as you can see, we got the exact grid, but again, we don't need these many number of columns because we don't have much space in the tablet, right? So like, as we move on to tablet and mobile, we have constraints with space. So for tablet, basically, see the uh, vertical, uh, sorry, the horizontal rows will remain the same, right? But then we need to change the values of the column grid. So let's just go to columns. So basically for tablet, we work with eight columns and also we don't need this much margin because they, you know, there's a lot of space wastage. So let's keep the margin to something like 32, right? So this tablet and similarly, it's done for mobile as well. You just have to duplicate, rename it as mobile. So for mobile, basically we normally keep a width of 480 pixels. So again, in the mobile frame, we just we don't have to change any parameters of the horizontal rows. We just have to change the parameters of the vertical columns. So let's just change that. So basically, we'll be working with four columns over here. Again, we can, you know, 
reduce the margin and you can also reduce the gutter size. So that's it. You now know how to create responsive grids in Figma and why they are so important for clean professional designs. Remember, grids aren't just guidelines. They are the key to making your layouts consistent and adaptable across all devices. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and drop a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts or any questions you have. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.